You ready? You ready? Oh, that was in Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Welcome back to the Inimitable Impact Podcast. How are you doing, Kate? I'm doing great. I'm excited. Let's go. Today's guest, we have the president of growth at EXP Realty, Dave Kennard. He actually um, talked about his accident that he had back in his 20s and how that really changed the way that he looks at perceived limits. Uh, it changed, really like took away the fear that holds a lot of us back. And so I think that these tools are going to be really relevant to anyone who's looking at their life and trying to decide what direction to go into or how to kind of move past wherever they are. So I'm excited about sharing this impact. I think it's going to, um, it's just going to resonate with everybody. I think, I think it will. I uh, think we just get right into the show today. Just hop into it, get the impact out there and let's let the people hear it. All right. Let's dig in. Here we go. In three, three, two, two, one. Impact. All right, Trent, you know who we have to welcome on the podcast today? Who we got today? I think you you know this guy kind of well, don't you? I know him a little bit. I Just know him a little, little bit. bit. Uh, we've got Dave Kennard on the podcast today. Dave, how are you doing? Fantastic. Guys, thanks for having me on today. Appreciate it. You got it. Hey, um, I was Trent was wondering um, how we met. Do you remember how we met? Um, I do remember. I do remember. Um, I'm pretty sure that my <laughs> parents brought you home from the hospital one day to my house <laughs> <laughs> and said, look what we got you. Look what uh, we got you. We got a new pet. And I've been stuck with you ever since. <laughs> oh my gosh. It happened. It happens. Yes. Dave just happened. Happiest happens. day of my life. I, I knew it. That's good. Yes. Good save there almost. Uh, Dave happens to be my big brother. So um, I did mention on our, on our intro that I may or may not have hit him in the head with a wooden swing. Um, how old? How old were you when this um, alleged? <laughs> yeah, attempted manslaughter. It was. Um, yeah, yeah. Version of the story. There really I, are, but I'm pretty sure I was somewhere around it, maybe eight or so, eight or nine, I think. Because oh, see, I was like a newborn. I couldn't yeah. even. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I don't see. You were old enough to lift a large two by 12 block <laughs> and throw it off of the slide platform at me. So whatever oh, no, age the version I remember too. That's <laughs> whatever age you're strong enough to do that. That's how old you were. I know. It's so nice when you're trying to like, Hey, would you like a swing? And it accidentally <laughs> so, makes oops. your brother get stitches, yes. but you know, um, awesome. Well, you know, it's a great start <laughs> off the <with injuries. laughs> Um, All right. So after obviously you recovered from the incident, yes. um, but tell us, you know, what are you doing right now? Because I know you're president of something and I don't think your name is Biden. So uh, what, what are you? <laughs> no, no. Although he does, he lives like 20 minutes away from me, but um, oh, nice. okay. his house, his house is bigger. Well, I guess not. I guess maybe. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I have been I've been blessed to uh, um, be part of EXP Realty. And so I'm the uh, president of growth for United States. And um, I've been here since 2018. And we had about 12,000 uh, 12, agents across the U.S. and Canada at that point. Um, and today we are sitting at over 56,000 agents and we're in 15 countries. Wow. So, so it's been some fun growth the last couple of years. I feel like um, a lot of that is probably falls under the category of growth of which you are president. So I guess we have to give you some props for that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the right of that. That, yeah that's well, you know, it's, it's, it's what I love to do and it certainly is fun, but uh, you know, of course, I, I'm obviously not doing all of that. Yes. So I've got well, an amazing an I've got an amazing team, team. Uh, and I've met some of them. Uh, very yep. cool. So uh, you did this before, though. I mean, this isn't you didn't walk in here and go, hey, I think I'll grow a company. I mean, where did you come from before that? 
So I spent, uh, gosh, in my 20s, right, late 20s, I started getting into uh, franchising in real estate and growing uh, the Keller Williams offices. And that was back in the early days when that company, which is now you know one of the largest in the world, um, was super, super new. I actually owned KellerWho.com back in the day because nobody had ever heard of that company. I would call people and they would say, Keller Who? So I bought the URL and that was kind of my <laughs> shtick for a while until we weren't Keller Who anymore. Um, and uh, about 16 years growing that company and that, that they got up over uh, 160,000 agents uh, worldwide as well. And, um, and now I'm here at eXp. Nice. Um, that, that's quite a journey from, I think you were in Maryland, right? Starting yes. out. Yes. And then kind of been all over the place. So, yeah. So we grew all over Maryland and then we grew, you know, spread out, uh, you know, north and, and northeast through the mid Atlantic. And uh, so now I'm up outside of Philly. Okay. You played a, you played a couple of sports growing up. Well, yes. One of my favorite sports. Fishing? I played fishing. Fishing. <laughs> fishing. <laughs> fishing. <laughs> fishing. <laughs> fishing. Yes. Yes. I did. Uh, uh, I can't think of that. I was going to make something up, but I can't think of the name of that. The, the dance synchronized swimming. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah. So a little, little lacrosse, You're amazing at that. little lacrosse in our family history. Actually, I don't know if you can, I guess you can't see it back there, but dad's stick that he played with at Cornell. So yes. Um, so dad's stick is back there. He has old, old stick they played with, but uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, our family sport, lots of, lots of fun. And uh, still now I've got two kids that uh, are one that's playing lacrosse and headed off to McDaniel college in the fall to play lacrosse there. So we're excited about that. And uh, my youngest is, has given up lacrosse, believe it or not. I know, I know. The we, first I've heard of this. <laughs> so we are, we, we have, we had a family meeting and we have decided to allow her to retain Canord as her last name. Uh, it was touch and go for a little bit there, but um, she still wants to play catch in the yard and, and that kind okay. of stuff. So, so we're allowing her to stay, but um, she is running full time. So she is cross country oh, wow. and, um, winter track and spring track and, and is killing it. She's doing That's great. She's awesome. I love that. You know, for people who, who have not played lacrosse, I just want you to understand that, um, <laughs> when lacrosse families get together, it's not like when your family gets together, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to assume what you do, but I will tell you that we all show up with trunks full of lacrosse sticks and we didn't put them in there. They were there because our cars <laughs> come yes. that way. And uh, we end up in the backyard and um, it is not unusual to have your like 65 year old, whatever grandfather, dad, hip check you yes. while you go to the goal, because we are. If no goal. one tears an ACL, it's not a family reunion. Exactly. I mean, you, guys got a, you guys got a, a history of violence in that family. Yes. You play <laughs> tackle yes. lacrosse. I mean, it gets rough. Yes. Yeah. Um it's a blast. It, and, and the games are like, um, they're like back when the Indians played it because it's whoever wants to play it. Like, <laughs> Practice for war. Too many people versus too many people. Uh, no rules. And, um, you know, you no, go in. No helmets, no pads. When somebody yes. cries, we decide, you know, one of the parents <laughs> right. comes out and go, Oops. all right, that's, that's enough. enough. Maybe that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> somebody stepped on a small child. We should wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Somebody steps on a sparkler, then we have to go in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that may have happened. May. Um, all right. Awesome. Well, we're here to talk about impact. That's, um, you know, that's really the key. And uh, I, you know, I know a lot of your, your story, obviously being your sister, but um, I want you to just tell us a little bit about, I know you had a, you had a probably a lot of series of impacts that you've gone through in your life, but there's one in particular that obviously is one of those life-changing moments. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Once you get into it, I'll have Trent throw up your, your picture too, but um, oh, cool. okay. tell us a little bit about yeah, so impact is an interesting word to utilize with this yes. um, because true, true. <laughs> we're talking about um, a boat impacting some rocks. Um, yeah, so uh, I was in my late twenties and um, was kind of you know in that that phase of trying to conquer the world and and figure things out. And so I was um, you know, launching franchises and growing businesses and um, okay. you know you kind of just get kids or all that yep. kind of stuff like that. So young, yep, I, we had one. So yeah, so we had um, we had built a we just built a house and had a baby and you know all that fun stuff and and building a business and um, so you just you know especially at that age you're invincible you're you're just going after things and and going for it and um, 
so one afternoon after, uh, you know, after getting off work, I actually went on a boat with a guy who ran our mortgage company. And um, it's a really, it's a, it's a really long story. I won't get into all those details, but uh, turns out that while I was working, he was out drinking on the boat. Um, and so he, uh, at idea. some point, yeah, yeah, not, not good, not good. And so he, at, at some point, um, drove the boat. Uh, he, he missed the channel markers and drove it into some submerged rocks and the boat came to a dead standstill. And I was standing up on the passenger side. It was a 28 foot open bow, uh, bay liner. And so I just kind of smacked forward and whacked my head. Think of a, uh, put a light bulb in a sock and swing it against a big metal bar. And that's basically what happened to my, to my skull. My face. Yeah. That's my face. Not good. No. Yeah. So this it was on the Chesapeake, right? Out on the. Yep. Yep. And uh, I was over by Kent Narrows. So uh, yeah, so I, I crushed in my head pretty good. And um, it was dark at this point we were, we were uh, heading out of there. So um so I don't think they knew what the uh, extent of the, the damage was at that point, but he did know that it was a serious accident and he did know that there was, you know, kind of blood all over the place. And so, um, you know, he quickly jumped into action and grabbed all of the beer cans out of the cabin um, that had been stuffed in there and started <laughs> filling them with water to sink them. So that when, so before, you know, he called anyone to come save us. Well, priorities. Um, Right. Oh so, yeah. So he wasn't that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm, I'm bleeding to death on the floor of the boat and he's filling up the beer can so he doesn't get arrested for drinking and boating. Um, so yeah, so I did, I got the, uh, the shock trauma helicopter ride and, uh, just a lot of gratitude for, um, all of the folks at Maryland state police and, and, uh, that whole, uh, the, the shock trauma center at university of Maryland, an amazing job flew out there, got me and flew me up to, uh, shock trauma and, did, I think I did about 16 hours worth of surgery to put my face back together again. But I basically, I crushed in my, my forehead, bridge of my nose, my eye socket, my cheekbone and everything else all through here. Um, I was just at the dentist the other day and they do either your normal um, uh, <laughs> x-rays x and stuff like yeah. that. And you know, I don't think about it. Right. And, 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 you know, I don't even think they knew, you know, anything about it. So he's pulling up the x-rays and I just like, there's like 30 screws all at different <laughs> angles, like all inside my mouth. Cause they, they screwed the, uh, the one plate down to my jaw at the top of my, uh, mouth line there. So it's pretty, pretty wild to see that. I just hadn't really thought of it in, in a lot of years that way. So anyway, so yeah, so that was, um, but it was pretty touch and go. I mean, I had, uh, you know, a lot of pretty, pretty good amount of damage. And I know that, um, when my wife showed up, right. When Kristen showed up at the uh, shock trauma, they found out where I was and, and everything else. And she uh, got there. My buddy, Alex, uh, Alex and Tracy came and uh, took care of Paris, my dog, oldest daughter, and, uh, helped uh, get Kristen to shock trauma. And when the doctor came out on one of the breaks in surgery and he said, you know, Hey, he's maybe paralyzed from, from the neck down and, uh, blind in both eyes and brain damaged. Uh, turns out I was only brain damaged. I was going to say, oh, I, I'm so <laughs> glad you said that. And I didn't have to. <laughs> so well, yes, I was very, very, very blessed and, and, and fortunate. Uh, I think the Lord was, uh, watching out for me that day, but it, it, the doctors did say that it, you know, once it, it all, you know, came out and, and, you know, obviously I lived, <laughs> so, I'm, you know, sorry, spoiler, like spoiler John alert. Food. I did so not did die. Right. Exactly. Awesome. So, um, but yeah, so they, uh, but it, you know, they, they did, it did turn out that the way that my head hit the metal trim of the, the windshield was just in such a way they said, basically, you know, like a millimeter this way or that way or whatever, you know, I probably would be dead. And they, most doctors said, we've never seen anyone sustain the injuries that you sustained and live, yeah. let alone end up walking out, you know, albeit a long time later, walking out of the hospital on my, on my own. So I remember after the accident, cause I, I know, and I, I know you don't know who was coming and going. I remember getting the phone call and driving in the middle of the night, um, to the hospital, uh, probably about 120 miles an hour. Um, because I only thing I knew was that you were airlifted and that was it. Mm. And nobody knew if you were alive, nobody knew anything, you know? So I'm just driving to try to get there. And then I remember standing next to your bed and, and you were conscious, but you didn't know who I was. I mean, you were just completely oblivious and you had blood all down your face. And, um, you know, it, I just, it was very upsetting. Obviously we were really worried about you. And so I, I remember kind of that whole night. And, and I think what people don't realize is they think, okay, he made it. That's great. But they don't see the afterwards. They don't see you having to go for however many, like, eye fittings like you know what I mean like the things that you had to go through just to get back to, to normal and then having to um adjust to to sight to your sight you know and right. and then um I 
I got to learn more about it when I watched my dog <laughs> also <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> have an accident. Something we have in common. My dog lost the same eye. Yeah. You guys are matching buddies. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So my my right eye was was crushed beyond repair in the accident. So originally they thought I wouldn't gain sight in either, but I did regain sight in my left eye, but my right eye just never came back. And, and so there's something called sympathetic ophthalmia where um, it, it, if you leave it in, there was, it was about a 12% chance that my body would actually attack my good eye and I would go completely blind. Um, so they said, we can leave it in and you, you wouldn't be able to see out of it. Um, but, uh, but it may, it, you know, your body may attack your other eye. And I said, well, I don't really want a 12% chance of going blind. So they actually, I had to make the decision and I'm still, you know, you're in recovery. You're still trying to, you know, it took me a long time to even be able to breathe properly and, and to be able to, you know, I was on a walker and, and, and that kind of stuff. I couldn't leave the hospital. Um, and, you know, in the midst of everything else and trying to figure everything else out, um, and of course your life is on hold and, you know, people are watching your kids and, you know, n- no idea which way's up. And they said, okay, you need to decide what you want to do. And so I had to decide to, you know, whether or not to tell them to actually go through a surgery and take my eye out and they put an implant in and they do all this other kind of stuff and you get a fake eye. And, you know, that just seemed weird to me. I didn't know anyone that had a fake eye. You know, you hear about weird stories about, you know, the well, marbles see, or whatever. I was thinking googly eye, is it going to swing around when I move my head and stuff? So the googly eye would have been I know, funny I for know, me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a weird, I mean, it's a, a really weird decision to make. Yeah. Take, I think you should take my eye out. So, you know, to yeah. do that and then to go through and have no idea what you're going to look like and, you know, what, what life will be like afterwards. And then of course, then I'm, you know, you're adjusting the fact that you have, I have no depth perception. So everything's two dimensional. Take you to adjust to having one. one <laughs> it's I'm still adjusting, right? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> what? It, definitely, definitely, right? definitely get used to it. Um, I mean, there's certain things, you know, that, that you do adjust and you learn, but I still, I mean, I have no depth perception. So everything is two dimensional. I don't see in 3d. So it's weird things to, that I had to get used to at first was, you know, pouring cereal into a bowl, right? It's, it's like when you're pouring it in, it's not, if you're looking down at it, it's not increasing in volume. It's flat. It's like you're pouring it and it's just staying all at surface level. So it doesn't, it doesn't increase this way. So anyway, so things like that, Kristen likes it when I pour wine because she gets really big glasses <laughs> of wine because just, just keep pouring, just keep pouring, keep pouring. She gets the value pour for sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's no, there's no volume. There's no, you know, trying to figure out where things are dimensionally and, and that kind of stuff. I remember one time in, in church, uh, you know, I was sitting up, we have a church where it had the big floor area and then it had the kind of bleacher sections that go, that go back. And so I was back there um, about three quarters of the way up and there's this little bug, little gnat that just kept flying around my face. And I just kept trying to get them out. So finally, Kristen looks over, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, there's this bug. And it turns out it was actually that the, the church also had skylights and someone somewhere, their watch, the light was reflecting it's off their watch. Yeah. It was actually on the wall at the front of the church. Oh, my gosh. So it was like 120 feet away from me. So you didn't get um, it. And I, no, I, didn't, I was not able to catch that. It was kind of like your dog chasing, chasing the laser. You know, that kind of stuff. So that was, that, that was me. Um, so, yeah, th- th- I mean, so those are examples, just the fact that, um, you know, it's an adjustment. I mean, trying to, trying to do sports, trying to just, I mean, do simple things like, you know, if I'm pouring the coffee into the coffee mug, not, you know, I, for a long time, I missed the mug. I mean, I would do this and I would do this and it looked like it was in front of it and I would just hundred percent miss. Um, so now I have to, you know, touch the mug down, uh, you know, the pot yep. down onto the mug and make sure it's over it, you know, pouring anything like this. So that's all the, you know, little, little, those are all the minor things. Those are minor things. Yeah. What's the, what, what is the impact of, um, you know, facing did Trent, did you flash that picture up? Got you, right here. you want to throw that, throw that picture. Up? We have a picture actually of when you were, um, when you were in the hospital oh, there. And so that's that was right beautiful after beautiful there. Yes. Yeah. You look, you look nice. Um, that's yeah. what I remember. I mean, I remember standing, I remember that room and I remember standing next to you and I was over on the side with the, with the bad eye. Um, and you said, you didn't really know I was there, but um, yeah. What is the impact of facing your mortality? You know, I mean, uh, you know, what is, what is the other impact? Because I know there were inconveniences, things like losing your taste and, you know, all of those things that you had to deal with are, um, distractions in your life, but what's the big impact that really hit you from that? 
Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a really, really strange thing to come that close to death. And I'm going to know you've had your own experience and experiences. So, you know, it's, um, it, it is, you know, to be introduced to your mortality like that in such a dramatic way, you really take stock of things quickly. Um, and it's a weird, for me, it's been a weird mix because, um, I found that some things, um, some things that used to bother me, don't bother me anymore. It's like, don't sweat the small stuff kind of, kind of a thing. And it's all small stuff. So there's a certain amount of things that it's like, it's not worth worrying about. Right. But, um, but on the other side, I've become much more driven and, and much more passionate about things that are important to me that I don't let things get in my way for those things. And so I do sweat the small stuff when it comes to those things. Right. And, and you, your priorities come into focus really fast. Um, so you kind of, you kind of get a feel for, you know, what you really care about, what you don't care about as much. Um, and you know, which, you know, who, who's there for you is not there for you kind of a thing. Um, but you also really get, you know, what, what things in your life are important. You take stock of those. Um, and so, you know, I, I would like to think that I've, you know, been a better, you know, husband, father, um, a friend, whatever it is since that time. And I've, I've been a better business person and, and business partner and that sort of thing too. Um, just because there's, there's less, less wasting time. Um, and so, you know, and, and it's again, and taking stock of what's important to you, you're, you're prioritizing and, and you're prior to prioritizing all the time. What's interesting is you'd think getting smacked upside the head with a boat <laughs> right, yes. is, is like, lifelong lesson. Like I will never forget this. Right. And it's right. amazing how over time, so, like that impact was huge. I mean, it was, it, it, it and, and there are parts of it that stick with me forever. I mean, I, clearly. Right. And, and mostly in good ways and sometimes in, in bad ways too. Right. Um, but there's, a, there's the, the impact of that um, changes how, how you think in a lot of ways. And so those things, those things stay with you, but some of those lessons over time, um, you know, fade a little bit. And then you have, a, you know, another impact moment or another, you know, another change and that kind of stuff. You and need me to hit you with a swing? Yes. Yes. Okay. That was my first impact moment was the swing. <laughs> a little, so, literal impact. See, there you go. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, right. And it was, it was actually, it was up here. So it was the same, same side. Um, so, you know, other, I mean, like, you know, I, I, when I tackled, I took on a new opportunity in, in business and I moved my family. We had built our dream house. I got to design a house in general contract. We built this beautiful um, uh, house and everything else. So we sold that house and we moved to a place we'd never lived before with the, with the kids and, um, you know, for a new opportunity. And that lasted about three years. And I realized it wasn't that it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't the one that I wasn't what I wanted. Um, and so, you know, then you're like, all right, well, so I left, I literally, I didn't go leave for something else. I just left because it wasn't the right vehicle for me to go where I wanted in life. And it was, you know, that was a decision where I don't know if I would have done that had this not happened. Right. I mean, that's a big, that's a big deal. You move your family, you leave, you know, you, you leave everything you had. And we were living still in the general vicinity of where we had both always lived and grown up. And we were, you know, 30 minutes from where we both grew up. And, uh, you know, then we had our, you know, we had our kids, we had our house, we had our life, we had everything else. So to pack up and move and to go up there um, was a big deal. And so it was kind of like, make it work. Right. And, and then to one day wake up and go, this isn't the right vehicle. This isn't, this isn't, taking me, you know, isn't building the life that we want to build. It's not congruent with who we want to be. Um, and it was like, all right, I'm going to stop doing it. <laughs> it's like, well, what are you going to do? I don't know, but it's not going to be this. And, you know, and it, and it's that, um, I don't know if I would have kind of had the, um, you know, the ability to make that decision that way that, you know, there's, it, there's, you know, fear, fear is a, it prevents us from making a lot of things. Right. And, um, it, it prevents us from, from achieving a lot of things and fear holds us back so much more really than anything else. And when you go through something big like that, you have a lot less fear. I'm, I'm not afraid of, of, you know, hardly anything anymore. I mean, lo losing people I love kind of a thing is, 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 is the big deal. Um, but so many things that would have held me back before it's like, pff, you know, you're gonna make a cold call. Like you're gonna be afraid of someone hanging up on you. Like, you know, <laughs> what are they going to do? Hey, oh, with no. the <laughs> like, I'm not worried about this. Do they have so, a swing? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. exactly. A violent swing offender. So, um, you know, so those are the things where, you know, when you go through those, so now I'm up here, that's another, that was another big change in life. It was, a, it was an impact moment for us because it was like, all right, now we're going to pivot and where are we going to go? Um, but as you go through each one of those, I think each one of the original, you know, everything you go through 
prepares you for the next thing that you're going to go through. Right. And so you have these constant moments. And if I think, you know, I had a big one, but you know, some people go, well, I haven't had any, I didn't, you know, have a dramatic, I didn't almost die. I didn't whatever. And some people, it's funny. Some people are almost disappointed. I haven't had a big life-changing moment. I'm like, trust me, tell you what, why don't you, you don't really, yeah. Why don't you learn from ours or mine and and not have your own and just learn the lesson without having to uh, almost die. But, um, but I, you know, it, it does prepare you, but if, if you're paying attention, then there are other ones that are not as big that can still provide the lesson. Right. And so the next time you go through, so the, 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 the worst thing to do is to go through life and to constantly have incredible opportunities to learn and change, you know, happen to you or, or that you go through and not get the lesson from it. Right. That that's, so it's like constantly looking for, you know, what do I, you know, John Maxwell says, you know, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Right. And it's, it's like, all right, you know, every time what's my learning opportunity, what I, what do I get out of this? Um, and uh, so it's good to, it's good to go out and fail valiantly once in a while to, uh, yeah. to really get the good lesson. But I think that, you know, then every time you go through the next time you go into something, you know, now you've got something to lean, to lean on and go, all right, Hey, this can't be as bad. Mm-hmm. So we'll figure that we figured that out. We're going to figure this out. Yeah. I truly believe I'm just a big believer in life is going to continue to smack you in the head with a lesson until you learn it. And so if you choose to, to, I just said, smack you in the head. Now I'm going to say turn a blind eye. I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> What was that? Brother, the, guys, it was okay. Wayne's World. It was like, would I? Would I? I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> right. um, but but really, like, if you decide to ignore something, um, I believe it's going to come back around in in another scenario and another scenario. And and there are people who go through life being presented with an opportunity to learn the same lesson, and because they refuse to find the lesson in it, they never get out of the pattern of having to repeat the same mistakes. And yeah you know, that that's so big. And I'm thinking about that decision that you made to kind of just, I don't know what I'm going to do, but um, I'll tell you what, nothing's going to be as worse as not being here anymore. And so whatever it is that is coming my way, um, I have my family, I have the things that are important because I have preserved those things. I now understand what those things are and those things are going to be here. So I'm not afraid of what's coming because even if it's ugly, I, I already have identified and have held on to the things that are important. And I think that is so pivotal in life and moving forward. Yeah, I think I think we also have a picture of who we are, and a lot of times we build our world around the size of who we think we are. Um, so when you, you know, when you realize like, hey, wow, you know, I, I got tested in a way that, you know, could have really broken me, and, you know, came out the other side stronger for it. You know, now it's like, all right, well, you know, what there's that saying about, uh, you know have a dream so big that you can't achieve it until you grow into someone who can. Um, And so I think that is where, you know, you look at it and say, well, you know, a lot of people build that, you know, build their life or what, you know, what's, what's realistic, you know, well, what should I, what should I shoot for and who do I want to be? And what what do I want, what do I want to build and where do I want to get in life? And they kind of have this ring drawn around this imaginary ring. And you've, you've probably seen the meme or the picture of the horse that's sitting there next to the fence and the lead for the horse is just draped over the fence. And it's not tied up, yeah. but the horse doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Right. And, and so they've got this, you know, they've got this limitation that's just in their head. And, and I think people build those, those walls around themselves. And so they, they, they build a life that's, that's reasonable or realistic based on what they believe about themselves. And so an event like this, where you have to, you know, you have to do more, be more than you maybe thought that you were or could do, or go through something you didn't think you could go through. And that's why people do things like, you know, ultra marathons or those tough mutters or, or whatever. It's like, why would someone go out and, and beat themselves up like that? It's like, well, you know, I want to go prove that I can, I want to prove to myself. It's not about proving to other people. I want to prove to myself that I can do this because then next time I'm up against something that I d- didn't think I could do. It's like, well, if I didn't think I could do that and I did, what other things do I not think I could do? Like, you know, I mean, don't go crazy with it and everything. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, how big are, I'm just thinking about, you know, I, I know when you were growing up and you had different ideas of what you were going to do in life, I, I, I'm sure that you would not have named what you're doing right now. And you would not have come up with a list of the things that you could say you've done at this point. Um, I don't, I, I think 
Um, you know, you had a healthy confidence and, you know, you're a lacrosse player. You have to have healthy confidence, right? That was the best advice you ever gave me before tryouts. Is, uh, if you want to be a yeah. lacrosse player, you better be, you better be a little cocky and a little That's right. That's right. It. A little swagger. Uh, Get your swagger yeah. on. But, um, you know, and so, so I know you had that, but I don't know that you saw the, the really the depth of, of what you were going to accomplish and, um, how, and how important and how pivotal was that for you to see, to let go of those, you know, perceived limitations or, cause I think a lot of people do pick, you know, I, I want to be, um, for me, it was like, I wanted to be, um, a really great speaker for us lacrosse and teaching lacrosse stuff. And then, you know, I remember when I met John and he's like, don't you want to reach more people than that? <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait, I could reach more people than that. But yeah. my own limitations were so small. I was only seeing one community uh, yes. and I didn't yeah. realize the impact I could make. So, um, you know, what helped you to kind of like let go of those limitations for yourself so that you could do what you're doing? Because I know you kind of walked into a couple of companies and said, look, I, I just saw what I did with this other company. Right. I think I could do that for you. And they were like, OK, <laughs> yeah. give it a shot. Right. Give it a shot. Yeah. You know, I think it's there's. um it's in uh, think uh, think and grow rich, right? Napoleon Hill. Um, that I think is, is where it. it I, I'm sure it originated somewhere else. But that uh, bargain of a life for a penny. I even know that thing. And you know the the moral of that that little poem or whatever was just the fact that you know you bargained with life for a penny, and then he found out that life would have given him anything he asked for, but he asked for a penny, so he got his penny, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's like, all right, well, what do you want? What do you that go after that? Um, and I think that uh, you know th- those you know those moments are when again you find out what you're made of. You have the opportunity to go through things, and then when you kind of come out the other side, you go, <clears throat> you know, all right. So what do I want? What do I want to go do? What what's your, your your sense of what's possible is um, you know is expanded, right? Your sense of yourself, your sense of opportunity, your sense of what what life has to offer, and that kind of stuff. Um, with that movie, Facing the Giants. You remember with the Brock and the guy, the coach is yelling at him. He's doing the death crawl. And if you guys saw that movie, um, he's doing the death crawl across the thing. And he's, and he's like, you know, just give me your very best. Give me your very best. And so the kids, the first, the kids on the football team were thinking, you know, we, we can't, we, you know, we can't win. The other team's too good. You know, that was their mindset going into it. And then when they saw that, when they, they were really passionate about it and everything else, and that they can do this and this leader on the team gets into the end zone. And then, you know, and then this other kid on the team says, Coach, I want to win states. <laughs> right. So they went from thinking they're going to lose every game to now they're going to be state champions. And like yeah. their mindset of what's possible got so much bigger. And it was just, you know, it's just a movie, but that's an example of, of what happens. And so I know, you know, for me, my my outlook on what could be achieved was like the limits came off. And now it's like, all right, well, pick what you want. What do you want to go do? And what's important to you? And I, I've been blessed to have some really good mentors in my life and some good coaches, um, and they they push you. And I think it's so important to um, you know to find a person or some people that resonate with you. Um, you know, I know that's what you guys are doing, right? I mean, you're coaching and you're teaching, and so you know, people should be, you know, should be pulling up a chair and listening because you know, fi- find the people that that resonate with you and and you know, soak it all in and understand it, but you know, they're the ones that will help you, you know, kind of smack, smack you around lovingly um, and, and help you see what you need to be doing and, and to think the right way. Cause it's, it comes from that mindset. And, you know, we do, we get stuck, we get stuck in our same daily mindset and uh, you know, that sense of ourself and stuff. And so, you know, again, you don't have to go through a dramatic event. Um, but, uh, but if you do, um, you know, it is something where you kind of go, okay, what's, what could be, what's, what's the possibility. And then what's important to you? Cause that's the other thing is, is really, it's great to get, you know, be all passionate and pumped up and go, I'm going to go conquer the world and go charging off there. But you know, you may go build something that's not what you want and it's a hollow victory. So then it's really focusing on, I mean, for me, my family is, is the thing that drives me. Right. So it's, it's, you know, I want to build a great life for my kids and my grandkids and, and, you know, it's, it's, so our, you know, what is, what does that look like for us? I also love to help other people succeed, right? So, you know, to be in an environment, you know, our company is all about, we, we talk about being agent success obsessed, right? And that's kind of our, our hashtag that we talk about is going, how do we help um, agents build? And we, and we take care of our staff too, but how do we help them build great lives? How do we pour into them and give them an environment and opportunity that they can go build something great? And not just, you know, not just sell a lot of houses, 
you know, serve your clients at a high level, but build a great life utilizing the vehicle of real estate. How do you go build something and how do you achieve your goals? And then how do we make sure that what we're doing is providing the vehicle for them to go do that? Um, And so being part of that's huge. Thing that I have seen um, and not, you know, I'm not advertising for EXP, but I I will, if you want me to, Um, (laughs) I'll I'll send you a price list. No, (laughs) but, but from, from being able to speak with EXP, from being able to speak with people who work for the company and being able to hear you talk and other leaders talk is Every single time I hear we help our agents, it's never we help our agents sell houses. It's always to have a better life. It is the whole package. It's they want to be here because they're fulfilled from all sides. And and a lot of organizations out there are are great with education for career related information. But um, that is a huge difference when you are enriching your life versus you're enriching your career, because that those don't always go together. In fact, they can right. actually be direct opposites. They can they can pull you apart. Um, I do want to ask you about you. You mentioned uh, mentoring, and you know I I know who you hung out with in high school because I got to watch you and uh, I got to you know hang out with a lot of the same people. But my question is, I guess after your accident, I feel like you got very choosy about who you surrounded yourself with. And now I know similar to what to me and also with Trent. Um, we very closely guard our, our inner circle and, um, and make sure that we're not being distracted and pulled into another direction. That doesn't mean that you're not hanging out with people that you can't uplift and help, but, um, talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, there's the, the, the old saying, everybody, you know, you're, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but I mean, it really is true. We tell our kids that all the time, right. As they're growing up, like, who are you hanging out with? Um, but you know, it, it you do a, you do think like the people that you hang out with. Right. And, and it's the mindset. And so, you know, I mean, I know you do a lot with positivity and stuff. I mean, if you're hanging out with positive people, you're going to think positively. Every time you come into a situation, you're going to go, we can handle this. Right. Versus the people who are always like, Oh, what was me? And that we're never going to make it. It Keeps you in line too, because if the people around you are positive, um, if I start to slip, then I, you know, they're immediately like, you know, what's going on. So it, it really kind of keeps me in check to be around other people that really aren't going to tolerate that kind of attitude. Yeah. They're going to, you know, pick me back up. Yeah. And it, it, I, there are different circles. And you mentioned the fact that, you know, we look for people that we can help, right? So it's not just, you know, we, ha- I hang out with people that hopefully I can pour into and, and, and provide something of value for them to help them succeed like people do and have done for me. Um, and then I have my, you know, my peers, and then I have the aspirational people, right? I want to hang out with people who are where I want to go. Um, I mean, I love the fact that I get to hang out with people. I mean, Glenn Sanford, who's the, the uh, guy who founded our company, you know, he's a multi-billionaire now. Um, and it's not about the money. He did it. You know, he wasn't he wasn't out pursuing the dollars. He had a he had an idea of how to make agents lives better. Um, and uh, and so he went and did that. So but he's super, super smart. And, to, you know, to hang around him, my brain it hurts a little bit after I walk away from conversations with him. Um, but it, you know, it, uh, it always stretches it and makes me, th- and makes me think bigger. And so those are the kinds of people where you want to, you want to hang out with, with those folks. Um, and, uh, you know, I also get the chance to hang out with people who pour so much into other people. And, you know, I found that, you know, I can, one of, you know, one of the things now is that, you know, I get to be a little bit laser focused, you know, on things. And so when I'm trying to achieve something and we've got something we're going after, you know, I'm, I'm buried in it. Right. And I'm, I'm so, I'm so focused on that, that you can lose sight of the people around you that need, you know, need some help um, or you have an opportunity to help. So it's easy to be, you know, kind of focused straight ahead and you're walking past all the people on the side next to you who, you know, man, it doesn't take much to reach out and give them a hand real quick. Um, And so when I hang out with other people that are just, some people are so good at that. I'm really envious uh, you know, of those people that just are always thinking of other people. Um, so I love to hang out with people like that because they're just, they're just like, they're constantly coming up like, Hey, I found this guy. Like, Hey, we should help this guy out. We should help this girl out. And it does remind you, doesn't it? It kind yeah, of, and you're like, it, Oh, it, I totally should have seen that. that. Yep. Yeah. Well, how do you, um, I know you coach, I know you parents, I, uh, you're great. Uh, you're a great girl, dad. Um, you know what, how do you, um, take the, the lessons that you've learned, you know, outside of work where you're very successful at work. How do you, um, bring that home, um, you know, as a husband, as a father and, and as a coach, you know, and a leader, how do you pass those lessons on? 
or what do you want to pass on to them? Yeah, gosh. Um, you know, I guess I, I hope to help, you know, we, we talk about, you know, making our ceiling someone else's floor, right? And so they can take, they can start where we've left off sort of a thing. So, you know, sharing what I went through and not just the, the you know, the, the story and all that kind of stuff, but sharing, you know, the, the, the mental stuff that you learn as you go through those things, what happens after the impact moment, right? Everything that, ha- you know, that's, that's where, you know, to, if you're, if you're working out, you got to tear your muscle fibers for them to build back stronger. And, and so it's the same concept with, you know, with something like this, where every time you have an impact moment, right, then you're, you get, you get torn a little bit and then, but it builds back stronger, hopefully, um, <laughs> so if you do it right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, so that's the kind of thing where that, if that's happened and it's through that re- rebuilding and repairing and, and re- rewiring um, and that kind of stuff, and you go, Hey, this is what I learned going through that. If we can pass that on to someone else, mm-hmm. then they don't have to have, they don't have to get hit upside the head with a boat to learn some of the stuff that I right. learned and to do those things. And it's like, Hey, you know, here's, here's some, here's where I was. And so, you know, I do, I do look for people that I can obviously, you know, with, with my kids, um, you know, I want them to learn the lessons that, you know, you, sometimes you, you become like the Charlie Brown teacher to your kids, right? They just the whole, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. they don't want to hear it anymore. Um, but, you know, but you, you have to look for the moments, right? You have to look for the opportunities and there are times it's amazing where you find those times when they're open and they want to hear about it or, you know, and it's, they're also, they're listening, you know, so it's, 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 every, you know, so much about how you do things and what you do, um, you know, as opposed to what you say. Mm-hmm. So you can say stuff all day long, but if they see that that's not, you know, really how you live your life or how you act. And I talk to my kids about being positive and, and, you know, just being like it life, you know, how you go through life is so much about the way you look at it, right? It's just uh, that, you know, it's not, it's not what happens to you. It's how you respond to what happens to you um, that, you know, and, and that whole thing about, you know, about happiness and everything else where it really is a choice. You're going to have people in the exact same circumstances and one of them is miserable and one of them is totally joyous. Right. And it's just, yeah. it's just their perspective on it. I like the, um, the picture of the, the guy is a drawing of guy and he's holding the jar and it says happiness on it. And there's another guy walking over and he's like, Oh, happiness. Where did you get that? And he goes, I made it myself. And I'm like, that's, that's so right. cool. I love that. <laughs> that's um, so great. I feel like too, with, with the impact moments, I mean, we can't save our kids and our athletes and, you know, people that are under us that we're leading from impact moments all the time. I mean, sometimes we can, and sometimes, especially as parents, we should have to protect them, but we wouldn't have learned the lessons that we learned if we hadn't experienced those moments. So sometimes I think our impact moments give us the ability to be just purely more empathetic. And I think sometimes our kids go through something that we didn't go through because their lives are very different. And I, a lot of people say, you know, Oh, kids haven't changed. Well, I'll tell you what, kids don't live in the same world that we did. Nobody was walking around with a camera on me, thank goodness, in high school, you know, and posting pictures that you could pinch out and like, oh, look, I can see. I mean, it just, we didn't live in that kind of world. So it's a hard comparison, but um, so, so it's hard sometimes to have empathy with things because, you know, it's like, oh, suck it up. You know, some of the things, the ways that we were raised is, you know, suck it up, deal with it, you know, be stronger. And that just and, means we're getting old and grumpy. Kate. <laughs> I know. Get off my lawn. Okay? Get off my lawn. <laughs> These days, you know, <laughs> when I, I was your age, <laughs> I know I walked 10 miles uphill, right. but I think that being able to say, I remember not your situation, but I remember feeling the way that you feel so empathetic to their feeling, even when it's not that situation. Um, and then saying, I remember what got me through this. You know, and and like you said, they're listening. And it's funny because I I like to compare it to a grenade um, where you'll tell them something and it's like you're pulling the pin and nothing happens. And you think I didn't impact them. I didn't they didn't hear anything. It's not getting anywhere. They're grumpy. They're they're slamming the door or whatever. But it is that grenade. And later on, while they're sitting and it's processing or they grow into it, that's when it hits them and it's there. And so our job is to plant those seeds um, with the lessons that we've learned and, and let them kind of grow into that later. So, um, I think that's really cool. I, I want to, um, I want to just ask you a little bit about your, um, your, your parents, not my parents that clearly we don't have the same parents. Trent, could you, um, there's a picture. I'm just, I'm curious. Oh, don't do it. I was waiting. (laughs) I've been waiting to drop this. I'm just wondering. (laughs) Um, 
there's, you know, not everyone's going to watch the YouTube version. Do you want to explain what we're seeing here? Are you talking to me? Speechless. Let's start with the Rocky crop I, I, so I, from, the, I knew, from the Rocky yes. workout. <clears throat> yes. That, that was uh, the lacrosse style back in the day, right? We wore all of our we jerseys. We still have those short. abs, you guys. It's completely unfair. Yeah. We didn't get the same jeans at all. But anyway, go ahead. So, yes. Yeah, so, um, I, 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 I'm trying to think of where I got those. These are some <laughs> great masks. Look at caveman masks. Mm-hmm. One of them is the, uh, the one I've got on is the brown brown hair. And so dad, uh, I clearly, I got my facial hair gene from him, <laughs> <Remember> that, <laughs> the, uh, massive beards and crazy yes. hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had the, uh, I had my classic, uh, aviators on as well as mm-hmm. was the style at the time. So yes. And my braided brown leather belt. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have, you remember those? I had to, you know I had to, my, those I brought my, no matter what size you are, nope. <laughs> you yes. have those braided belts. <laughs> exactly. And I'm pretty sure I had, you know, the, the jeans were pegged and I was probably wearing like bass shoes or something like that. So yeah. Yep. Black bro <clears throat> city all yes. over with, and, and dad's got like a muscle shirt on. <laughs> yes. Thankfully he had some muscles. That's so right. that it's okay. He still does too. It's crazy. Oh, uh, I know. So let's, um, you know, it, it, this makes a little more sense when we look at the other one. Let's just look at the other one. There we go. So, oh, there's mom. There's mom. There's and mom. So, you know, it's it's a family. family I didn't hair tell them style. at all that I was doing this. So <laughs> I might tell them. I don't know. Um, yeah, mom's wearing the same mask. With she's going to be so family. excited that you put that picture of her up there in her work <laughs> Super happy. outfit in her yes. suit. Yeah. So and I had my my flock of seagulls haircut too. Yes, which is great. I love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you like flock of seagulls? No, but I can tell you do. <laughs> Was that wedding singer? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So if you are listening to this podcast, I think you should definitely either go over to the website or go over to the uh, YouTube version because these are gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Um, and then follow I, I, the link in the comments to all of the pictures of Kate that I'm going to post later. Um, gonna have <laughs> you may to want to turn off commenting on this one. <laughs> I had worse pictures. Yeah, she, said, she goes, these are probably only two that I could probably show and not get in trouble with. I had a whole yes. list of pictures. I picked uh-huh. these. They were safe so, fish. Um, don't, don't do the one with the tree. No, the tree. I'm reserving that for when I'm really mad at you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Dave and I had a little, a lot of fun growing up. We, we had a, we had a very, you know, we yes. have a very fun family. I was concerned about bringing them on the podcast because I think that both of us are very passionate about what we do and and do a good job of what we do. And and we also get up in front of a lot of companies and people who respect us. And um, that we have to remember to. Behave and not be the goofy siblings that we are. All she's war- she's warning me not to post bad pictures of her. Is what she said. Right there. <laughs> is it working? <laughs> <laughs> we'll Tell me, um, as we're kind of closing this out, I'll put, throw you on the spot a little bit here. But okay. um, you've got, you know, we've got a lot of coaches, business owners, parents, and we have some teens who are going to be listening to this. So, so a little bit of a mix of everything, and. And if you could, you know, if you were being told, look, you've, you've got an opportunity to take something that you've learned in life and to pass it along because you can't take it with you. You know, if you don't leave it, it, it disappears with you. Um, you know, what do you what do you not want to leave this earth without being able to pass on that, that only you, an inimitable impact, only you could really pass this on because of the life you had and the impacts that you've had and the lessons that you've learned? Um, like I said, it's a kind of a big question, but so just kind of think about what is something that you want to make sure that that you can pass on? Um, Gosh, there's probably a laundry list, but I, you know, one of the, to me, one of the biggest things I I just feel like, um, you know, if people would would believe in themselves and what they can do and, and real and think about where they're going, who they're becoming and where they, where they want to go um, without limits right? Put that out there and, 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 you know, kind of dream big and really think about that and then believe that it can happen and then take action on it. And don't wait, don't wait. It, life goes really fast. If you're young and you're listening to this, let me tell you, like yesterday, I was really young too. Uh, you know, when I woke up today and I was old, it was crazy. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I started doing a boot camp thing. I like, I can't walk today because <laughs> they made us do squats and it was horrible. Uh, you know, I used to be able to do that stuff all the time. So, um, you know, so it life, 
does go fast, right? It does move quickly. And it's, it's, you know, you may not, if you're floating in the river, then you're moving at the same pace of, as the river. So you may not realize that it's moving really fast because the water around you is the same water that you're in. Right. But, you know, if you look at the shoreline, you realize, wow, things are starting to whip by pretty, pretty quickly here. Um, and you lose every minute that you waste, you know, you, is a lot of missed opportunities um, to go do something. And so it's not, you know, it's, it's enjoy what you're doing, be involved in things that bring you joy um, and, and enjoy the journey. If you're, you know, so people talk about the grind. I think the grind is BS. Um, I like to work hard. I love to work hard. Uh, everything I do, I like to work hard. Um, but so it's not about not working hard, but it's, it's the grind. If you're getting up and you're grinding and you're doing all the stuff that you hate, like you gotta go. I mean, yeah, there's always, there are always things that you, you aren't going to like, like if you, if you stop every time there's something that you don't like, then you know, you're not going to get there. But you know, if if you hate everything you're doing and you're doing it for some long-term output and result, then man, you're going to go through life hating what you're doing all the time. So you know, be find what you're passionate about, find who you want to be, and be involved in things that move you in that direction, and be fully engaged in what you're doing, and and find passion in what you're doing. And and it's it's part of that. Pretty soon you realize, you know, a you're going to get there faster than you thought. Um, because you're going to be bringing passion into what you're doing and B, um, you know, it's, you're going to be enjoying the, the every day um, in, in what you have going on. So, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about who you want to be, you're thinking about the life you want to build without limits, and then you believe that you can actually do it. And then you go after it, right. Then, you know, and then find passion in what you're doing every day and have fun with it. Uh, you know, that's, that to me is a recipe for, you know, for a great life. Yeah, I love that. I, I we talked to uh, Jamie Ucas and 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 she kind of alluded a little bit to something about um, you know she was grinding all the time about where she wanted to go and you put your head down when you grind you know you got your nose to the grindstone I think that's mm-hmm. where that came from right so um, if your head is down and the river is floating you know the river's flowing and you're going and then you look up and sometimes you get to where you're going and you realize it wasn't even you don't even want to be there anymore. It doesn't even fit what you wanted because you were so busy just plowing ahead in that direction that you never reassessed uh, who you were becoming in the process. And we get achievement focused and outcome focused. And, and I, you really hit it earlier when you said, think about who you're becoming, because I honestly believe the vision and the journey isn't about where you're going or what achievement you're going to get. Or, you know, one of my biggest things that I wanted to do was I really wanted to have a book in a bookstore, you know, and I had that. And then I really wanted to have a best selling book. And then I just got that. And I thought it, it's amazing. I was so excited to do it, but I don't feel fulfilled by it. And, and I feel way more fulfilled by who I become through the process than the actual thing that's handed to you because yep. then it's done. And then you move on to something else. Yeah. I mean, think about the, the depression rate for people that like the Olympic athletes, yeah. they go to the Olympics, or they, whether they achieve it and they go, or they get the gold medal or whatever it is. And then, then what you worked your whole life for that. And they get, and they typically gave up a lot. If they weren't passionate, I mean, how many you, know, you hear about the Olympic athletes who, you know, didn't go to school, you know, I mean, they, they took classes and stuff, but they didn't go to regular school. I mean, they were like sequestered and like focused on their thing and doing whatever. And, and they're elite. I mean, they're amazing and they do amazing things. Um, but you do hear about people that like achieve it and it's, you know, any other large achievement where someone sets that big goal and the focus is on the goal. And if you don't have enjoyment and passion in what you're doing, then when you get to the goal, it, it I mean, it's not, that goal isn't gonna yeah. give, give you what you're looking for. Right. So, so, you know, two things, one is make sure you're enjoying what you're doing while you're doing it. So that it's like, Hey, I hit the goal. Great. But man, that was, what a ride. That was awesome. Right. You know, I loved every minute of that. And two, you know, I believe in setting, you know, the stair step goals where it's like my, the end goal is something so big that I can never actually achieve it. You know, it's constantly part of that journey, but there's milestones along the way. So we can celebrate our successes because, you know, it's nice to have something, you know, more tangible and specific that you can check and say, man, I hit this. We can celebrate. This is awesome, but we're not done yet. <laughs> right now we're going for this and now we're going for this. And, uh, you know, yeah. one day I'll, I'll die. And, you know, the ultimate goal is go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Trent, do you think, um, do you think that that translates to what you guys have been doing at North? I, I, this is just kind of coming to me when we're talking about this is they've had these things set in front of them. A lot of these athletes that come into the school and it's been, you know, get, get these grades, show up attendance, like check boxes. And one of the things I know you guys focus on at North is 
developing the person and they ultimately find the success when they come to North. Do you think that that, that focus on that becoming like is the difference that you guys make? Absolutely. I mean, the first thing we do when we get kids, we have, we have the kids run a six minute mile before they even take the floor. We say, you guys run a six minute mile. The kids can't even fathom running a six minute mile, but they work toward that goal. They work towards it. And then once they achieve that goal, they go, man, I achieved that. So I can do harder things. You know, when, when something comes up, I can achieve that. And so that's, that's one of the things we set them up for right there to, to show that they can achieve that goal and then getting, being on the A honor roll is a goal for them. You know, doing certain stuff like that, like you said, those little milestones, we celebrate them. And then you did this, now let's work on doing this, the next step. And that's huge of what we do. And that, that's, that's a big part of our, my life too, especially for my kids that I teach, so. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Pretty yeah, and they, they, yep, you get them in right away saying, all right, you know, you can do this. Yep. So now they start going, all right, now all the other challenges that get in front of them. And that's, you know, same thing that we were talking about is that once you make it through something, the other challenges that there were before you may have said, Oh, I can't do that. And you're like, well, you know, maybe I can. There's, there's kids that run a mile 15, 20 times, but when they do pass it at one time, they realize that I can do anything. I can, yeah. I can do this. So I think that we're going to really, you know, I think there's so much in here that can be passed on to everyone who's listening. Definitely so definitely. thank you so much for coming on sharing all of this great stuff and letting us um, uh, hear about your impact and um, make a little fun of, of some of your pictures hey, but maybe next time we'll bring you on to have a brother sister competition pictures oh yeah oh go. that could yeah. go very badly yeah. <laughs> mm. both of us are sick that day yeah we'll just make well, that'll be an audio podcast only <laughs> like maybe when we're like 90 and there's no like we don't have to answer to yes any yes <laughs> that, might be better. that might be better no this was this was fun guys and i appreciate the opportunity to, to hang out with you i love what you're love what you're doing love the message of of what you're putting out there so it's it's great to be a part let's, of let, let's hear you say it inimitable inimitable there you yes. go. There you go. i actually did oh. actually did practice a few times before we started because i was like i know they're gonna ask me to say <laughs> I this I it. it was like emberger we got plenty we got plenty of outtakes of us trying to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well um if you are uh if you're out there and you're looking for a amazing company either to go work for you know to be an agent for or to hire um man i would say exp is absolutely inimitable as far as the world of real estate goes and and um i have seen that over and over again and you've got a president of growth over here who is um making it fun yes i, mean, I love business yeah. i love there business people but you can be successful and you guys have a blast yeah like, we are not stuffy you know. we are not we get stuff done we succeed at a high level we help our people succeed at a high level but we definitely have fun we definitely have fun doing it we we take you know serving others seriously but we don't take ourselves too seriously yes i love it all right awesome well thank you so much for coming on and thank um you. I'm sure I'll, I'll see you at, uh, you know, the next family lacrosse game. <laughs> there you go. Watch out. I'm sure that's coming. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dave. This is for that picture. This is, <laughs> oh, no. Dave, check. Wow. That was an amazing interview with Dave Knorr from EXP Realty. Kate, your thoughts on that? God, there was so much in there. And uh, obviously, I, I already know Dave very well, but getting to hear him break down uh, how to change your perceived limits and how to really think bigger and to, to lose that fear. Uh, I love how he translated, um, you know, the things that are not important and just kind of letting those things go. I thought that was, that was something that I'm definitely going to take with me uh, as well as kind of not being afraid of things that are so much smaller than the impacts we've already been through and have already survived. I think that's, that's going to be applicable to so many people out there. It's really powerful. That fear holds a lot of people back. So I'm hoping that people can get out of their comfort zone and do something different. That reminds me, what's the impact challenge for the week? Yes. So impact challenge, that's going to be about uh, rewiring and redefining our perceived limits, you know, just like Dave was talking about. So the challenge is to make yourself a big, uncomfortable, kind of scary goal that feels like um, you know, it feels a little bigger than you're used to a little outside of your, um, your zone that you're typically in and, uh, and to take one action step towards it, start moving, start moving towards that goal and start redefining, um, where our limits are and what we can actually achieve. Yep. Take that first step. 
And when you do take that first step, make sure you hashtag us, be inimitable on all social media channels. Also, go follow Kate Lavelle at Kate Lavelle, myself at Coach Trent Witts. And remember to have a great week and always be inimitable. Impact. Impact.